Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello and welcome to our course Marketing Management Part 1. This is second module of this course Business Environment and Strategy and this is lecture 3 of this module. So, in the last class uh, we started discussing about uh, marketing objectives, uh, competitive advantage, some of those concepts and started talking about the strategy and its connection with the marketing strategy part. So, what is strategy? A strategy as defined by Porter, the creation of unique and valuable position involving a different set of activities. So, when a firm has a strategy, it means that it performs different activities from rivals, its competitors or performs similar activities in a different ways. Porter defines there are three types of a generic strategy that firms can adopt to or they can pursue three different types of strategy. So, the first among these three different uh, three different generic strategies are overall cost leadership. Overall cost leadership means that as a firm you are the lowest cost provider of an offering. It could be product, it could be services. So, there are many examples like uh, many retail chains claim to be the everyday low price uh, provider. There are many uh, e-retailers or uh, uh, e-commerce based business which claim to provide the product at the lowest uh, prices. So, those are basically the companies which are trying to pursue this strategy of overall cost uh, leadership. However, you should note here that uh, in overall cost leadership, uh, this, this kind of uh, competitive strategy is uh, susceptible to uh, any kind of uh, uh, competitive threat in the sense if there is a second competitor or another competitor other than you who comes out with a new production technology or uh, does something uh, different that they can offer your product at a lower prices, then your competitive ed edge is lost. So, just based on the uh, competing just based on the cost uh, may not be a very advisable situation in many uh, business environments. On the other side, there is a second generic strategy which talks about uh, being a differentiated offering. So, that is differentiation, you offer product which has superior features or additional features uh, that consumers value, the customer value and uh, there is a image uh, differentiation in the minds of the consumers that is differentiation. So, if we look at the, the companies like um, Apple or we if we look at a company like um, uh, so one good example of differentiation is uh, apple which differentiate itself on the design and the user experience uh, there could be other uh, companies which can come out with a similar product like uh, uh, in terms of the features and other thing like uh, uh, product uh, as apple uh, produces however you will find out that image in the minds of the consumer that it its its product are very different in terms of its design and its that overall user experience the that is something which 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 provides that uh, an additional uh, competitive advantage to this apple and they are able to charge premium for that uh, this is not something a, a strategy which can be easily replicated by competitors because uh, the the uh, differentiation uh, lies not only in terms of offering or the product or the service, it also lies in, in the minds of the consumers. So, overcoming that image differentiation in the minds of consumer will not be an easy task for any new competitor uh, in the market. Then you have a third type of generic strategy which is focus. Focus strategy is, uh, is about uh, focusing on a set of a small set of customers and understanding them in the best possible way and coming out with a product that be best suits the requirement of that uh, customer segment 
and when you serve those customer in such a way that you are uh, probably better than uh, any other competitor which is offering their uh, product in the market, then uh, again you are able to charge a premium for uh, uh, this kind of uh, strategy. So, you see the focus strategy could be uh, pursued by a company in India like uh, Cafe Coffee Day, uh, which, which basically um, relies on the cu customer intimacy and customized uh, product to the requirements of the customers. Similarly, Dell also offers you uh, if, if, um, this kind of flexibility that you can design your own uh, laptop or any other device that you are trying to purchase. You can uh, specify or you can change the specification as per your requirement. So, that kinds of focus strategy is uh, just uh, con uh, is based on uh, focusing on certain set of customers and serving their needs better. Now, if we talk about uh, strategy, then we need to understand that uh, strategy formulation happens at the different uh, levels. Uh, the, at the topmost level, we have the corporate strategy where a conglomerate uh, which has a uh, different business, um, they have uh, this corporate strategy which determines the uh, mission and vision and objectives of the organization and provides the resource alloc provides the necessary resources to its different businesses. Then you have a different uh, SBUs or strategic business units which operates in uh, uh, different industry sectors. So, as per the requirement of uh, different industry sectors, these uh, strategic business unit formulate uh, uh, their plans to compete in the market and uh, they basically require a different set of uh, competencies or a different set of uh, set of activities that they require to compete or uh, do better than their competitors in, in the market. And then you have a functional level strategy which are like uh, marketing, manufacturing, R&D, financial and HRM strategy. These are uh, functionally specific strategy and uh, one thing you should note is that uh, uh, this strategy at the functional level should. Uh, be aligned in line with the strategic business units strategy and the corporate strategy. The next concept I am going to talk about is resource based view of the firm. Uh, many scholars see the organization as a bundle of resources and uh, according to them that organization draw their co competitive advantage or the edge from uh, their resources. So, a basis for competitive advantage of a firm lie primarily in the application of a bundle of uh, valuable, tangible or intangible resources and capability at firms disposable. Uh, resources could be of two type, uh, tangible resources, intangible resources, tangible resources in the form of uh, plant, machinery, equipment. Uh, so, those are basically the tangible resources and then you have intangible resources in, in the form of uh, brand, patents, uh, knowledge inside the organization. These are basically uh, the intangible resources. Uh, having intangible resources, superior intangible resources provide a long run competitive advantage as compared to tangible uh, resources. Now, one thing which you should note here is that um, about resource based view of the firm is that uh, capabilities is a bundle of resources specifically and organizationally embedded non transferable firm specific resource whose purpose is to improve the productivity of other resources possessed by the firm. So, what is said about the resources is that if a resource uh, um, possesses four characteristics uh, in the form of we call it as a framework uh, VRIN, it is a valuable resources that uh, it creates a value for the customers, then uh, it is rare R stands for the rare. So, if it is a valuable and rare and the third thing is that uh, inimitable, so it cannot be easily uh, copied by or uh, the uh, the competitors cannot easily replicate it. And the fourth characteristics uh, if, if a resource has that it is non substitutable. So, if, if a resource possesses this kind of uh, four characteristics, then that provides a competitive advantage to a firm. Uh, another concept and a quite a m important concept in this uh, strategy formulation is the concept of value chain. Uh, value chain concept was uh, a porter and the, here you see that the value chain is a tool for identifying ways to create more customer value because every firm is a synthesis of uh, primary and support activities performed to design, produce, market, deliver and support its product. So, in this framework of uh, porter's uh, generic value chain you will see um, 
a form is conceptualized of uh, something which delivers value to the customers and it delivers the value by performing a set of activities. Now, these set of activities has been classified in this uh, value chain uh, framework in two categories. There is a primary or um, um, primary activities and then you have the secondary activities. Inside the primary activities as you can see there are five activities inbound logistics that you get the raw material inside the organization. The second activity is operations where you perform uh, 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 or execute processes on the, the inbound material and then convert that uh, inbound material into the finished product. Then you have outbound logistic that is uh, distribution network are taking the finished product from your factory or the manufacturing unit to the customers uh, uh, nearest point or to the nearest uh, convenient place to the customer uh, is, is related with the outbound logistics. And the fourth part is marketing and sales that uh, which, which deals with the probably uh, as we have already discussed uh, the creating, communicating and delivery, uh, delivering of value to the customers and the service relates to the uh, after sales service uh, which, which is required for uh, uh, use of the product. So, these are the uh, five uh, primary activities along with this you have uh, uh, some additional secondary activities or the support activities uh, in the form of uh, procurement, technology development, human resource management and infrastructure. So, you see each of these uh, support activities support uh, different uh, uh, of uh, each of these five primary activities they can contribute uh, in increasing the efficiency of each of this uh, or any of these five activities. So, technology development can uh, help in probably reducing your cost in inbound logistics, it can improve your operations uh, to produce a better quality product, technology can enable you to serve your customer or uh, deliver your product uh, in best possible ways to your uh, consumers. Marketing and sales effectiveness and efficiency can be improved by technology in the sense you can sense the market or you can understand the customer needs better and the service is uh, how you can be more responsive to your customers can, uh, can be uh, served by the te technological advancement or deployment of technologies that help you in serving the customer need and the, uh, being a more responsive organization. So, the support activities uh, uh, provide uh, support uh, to this uh, primary activities. Now, the use of this uh, POTUS uh, generic value chain is that uh, as an organization you need to identify your uh, activities that you perform as an organization while de delivering value to the customers and uh, once you have identified the activities then you have to understand what is the uh, customers want and then you also understand uh, what is basically the cost drivers of those activities and the interrelation between these activities. So, by doing these things you will be able to understand which activities are unnecessary or which can be removed from the process. So, that you can bring down the cost or uh, you can do probably a, a better job uh, in certain activities. So, that uh, they improve the rest of the process like uh, for example, uh, if you uh, uh, in the design of a um, product, if you remove certain component or if you uh, modify the design of one component, it can lead to significant saving in the remaining stages of the production process or it can save you a lot of money in terms of uh, packaging and the portability of the product. So, that, that might be uh, uh, very much appreciated by the customers. This way you can either create the cost advantage or you can create a differentiation. Uh, by analyzing this POTUS uh, value chain. Uh, along with this POTUS uh, value chain, the, we identify five core business processes. The five b core business processes include a market sensing process, uh, where uh, you try to understand the needs of the customers, uh, what are their uh, requirements, what is their consumption environment, uh, uh, how they use uh, product. So, that comes under the market sensing part. Uh, the second part is a new offering realization by understanding customers need you design and develop new products that cater to your uh, uh, targeted customer that comes under new offering realization process. Then you have customer acquisition process that how do you acquire or how do you get your uh, 
product to be used by the customers. So, that is customer acquisition process and it is important to note that uh, companies uh, these days understand that acquiring customer is much more than uh, retaining the customers and that is why you have customer relationship management process because it is said that uh, many times the cost of acquiring a customer is as high as 5 times compared to your uh, uh, retaining a customer. So, the co companies once they acquire the customers, they maintain or they try to manage their customer in a way that they can, they can retain them for a longer time and the cost of managing customers is much less than cost of acquiring the customer. So, the customer's profitability increase uh, or uh, you say the customer's lifetime value uh, provides more profitability to the firm. So, a firm will like to retain a customer because uh, uh, as customer proceed in its li lifetime, uh, what happens is uh, its initial uh, cost of acquisition is high, but the maintenance cost goes down and ultimately uh, the uh, amount that it uh, spends on it, the company's offering and product also increases. So, on one side it gives you more uh, money, on the other side it takes less uh, cost to serve that customer. So, the customer relationship is another very important uh, thing and then fulfillment management process where uh, it is about the logistic and the delivery of the uh, product and services to the customers. So, these are 5 uh, core businesses process. In uh, 1990s, uh, uh, two scholars uh, Professor C. K. Prahlad and uh, Gary Hamel came out with the concept of core competence to explain why certain organization in the that time period have done better than uh, some of the bigger organization or those organization they have uh, they were more entrenched in the market they had more market power but uh, eventually they lost to this uh, smaller organization uh, which based on this uh, concept of core competence so core competence is capabilities that are critical to a business achieving competitive advantage uh, it is a basically collective learning inside the organization about its uh, uh, how it coordinates different set of operational activities and how it integrates the different technologies. So, uh, that is what uh, the definition of core competence is. Uh, a company, if a company possesses uh, or an organization uh, possesses a core competence, it, it will exhibit three characteristics. Uh, a core competence is a source of uh, competitive advantage by a significant contribution to perceived customer value. So, the core competence is something which is relevant to the customer, uh, a competence which comes out in the form of a core, core, uh, core product which is being valued by the customers. So, in a sense core competence create uh, perceived value in the minds of the customers. Then uh, uh, core competence second characteristics is that uh, characteristics that it is applicable to a wide uh, era, array of uh, product and market. So, uh, the result of core competence is said to be core product and you will see that uh, a company which has core competence uh, result in a core product, this core product can be uh, applied to a different, uh, different industry sectors or a different product market. I will explain to you uh, uh, after some time. Uh, through some examples uh, of about this concept and the characteristics of core competence. Uh, the third characteristics of uh, characteristic of uh, core competence is difficult to imitate. So, it is not easy for competitors to imitate and in fact, sometimes uh, when competitors try to imitate uh, core competence, it makes uh, their way of uh, competing even more difficult. So, there are many companies uh, which have uh, competence in certain areas. Uh, if we take the example of Apple, Apple has a core competence in designing and uh, user experience. So, they can design uh, certain devices uh, which are better than uh, any other company being uh, offering the similar kind of devices and that is that design and that which ultimately result in a great uh, consumer experience uh, result in a competitive advantage. Another example of core competence could be uh, Honda Motors which has a competence in uh, designing better engines. Now, you see this better engine uh, which result from their competency of designing uh, a better engine. 
result uh, can be basically applied or integrated into different industry uh, sectors or into different uh, final product forms. So, uh, this engine can be basically mounted on a two wheeler, the engine can, uh, can go inside a four wheeler, engine can go inside a, um, a gen generator set, engine can go inside even uh, aircrafts also. So, this competence of engine can be applied to a different product uh, markets. Another aspect of uh, this uh, difficult to imitate is that, uh, that in certain example of core competence, when the competitor try to replicate your uh, core competence, it becomes a, a very costly for them to compete also. So, another example of core competence could be this uh, um, Intel's uh, design of microprocessor. So, this microprocessor can, uh, can be, can go inside a mobile phone, it can go inside the laptop and it can go across uh, many other product and you will see that microprocessor of Intel as something which, which is, which creates a better product. So, that Intel inside uh, advertisement is based on that and it creates an image in the minds of the customer that the product is different from uh, any other competitive offering. Uh, related with this core competence is that uh, prescription that an organization should only nurture and focus on its core competence. So, all the activities which are other than core competence can be outsourced. And in that way, uh, you can further strengthen your core competence uh, and uh, you can get uh, other activities or uh, other set of uh, processes done at a lesser cost. Uh, then uh, distinct, uh, it refer, uh, basically core competence refers to a special technical and pro production expertise. Uh, core competence is one, ex, uh, one concept that can help you in understanding the the competitive edge of many company in different industry sector. So, we have discussed a couple of concept in today's class. We started with the strategy and different level of strategy. We have looked into this uh, three generic strategy type and then we have looked into the core uh, this uh, concept of resource based view, where we have looked into this uh, framework that uh, VRIN, if, if, a, if a resource has the, uh, these four characteristics, it provides a competitive edge to a firm. And the last concept that we have discussed uh, now is that core competence. So, with this I end this session and when we will meet into the next session, we will look into some other important frameworks of the strategy that are uh, uh, critical to the formulation of marketing strategy. Thank you very much.